pollutants, contaminants, and toxins are probably not words that come to mind when we talk about plants. But did you know that plants can actually play a very important role in cleaning up heavy metals, excessive nutrients, petroleum, pharmaceuticals, and even pesticides that might be in our soil? And this is known as phytoremediation. Now, we know plants are cool and they do a lot of different things. And one of the things that we know them best for is photosynthesis, where they're actually taking nutrients out of the soil, water and sunlight and converting that through a chemical process in order to make energy. Now, this energy is often what we use by eating them and also animals then also eat plants to get energy. Well, we know about photosynthesis, but through other chemical means, plants can actually also take these compounds that we have deemed either excessive or toxic in our environment and actually convert those so that they're less toxic, or in some cases, they just hold on to them to prevent them from being biologically available in their environment. Now, all of this is called phytoremediation, but the way each plant does it is kind of unique. Phyto extraction or phyto accumulation is when heavy metals are absorbed by the roots of the plant and then moved into other inactive metabolic parts of the plant, like the plant cell wall or membrane. Phyto stabilization or phyto immobilization is when the plant roots attract the contaminant and hold on to them so tightly, limiting their bioavailability and mobility, therefore reducing their toxic effect. Rhizofiltration is similar, but focuses on plants that are growing in a saturated environment, cleaning up contaminants in bodies of water. Cattails and water hyacinths are two examples of plants used in rhizofiltration to clean the water. In some cases, plants can take the chemical out of the soil and turn it into a gas that is then released out of its leaves, reducing its potency. This is known as phytovolatilization. Phytodegradation, as you can probably guess, is when the plant takes the toxic compounds out of the soil and then degrades their toxic potential. Whoa, wait a minute. It sounds so scary with heavy metals like lead and arsenic in your soil. Yes, but phytoremediation can also mean using salt tolerant plants in order to make saline soils more productive once again. In fact, there's a lot of garden plants that we know of that can actually help remove contaminants out of the soil, including garden geraniums, cockleburs, sunflowers, and even the Bermuda grass that you probably have in your own front yard. This sounds so good. Why don't we hear more about phytoremediation? So as concern over our impact on the environment continues to grow, phytoremediation is getting a lot more attention because of its economical and environmental approach. However, there are some drawbacks, and one of those being that most of the research has been done in a controlled environment. As gardeners, we know that growing plants in a controlled environment is a lot different than growing plants out in the field. For example, we know certain plants are only hardy in certain areas. So while one plant might actually fix a contaminant in the southern United States, it might not actually be able to grow in the northern United States. Or perhaps maybe the plant can fix the contaminant in North America, but if you try to use it as a solution in Asia, there might be a natural disease or insect that prevents that plant from actually growing. Even if you are able to get the plant to grow, they can only grow so much. And if the contaminants are outside of the root zone, they likely are going to remain uninfluenced by the plant. If you get the right plant for the right contaminant in the right location, phytoremediation is not necessarily a quick solution as it can take up to three to five years to see results. Finally, although the soil may be remediated, unless the remediation involves volatilization or degradation, the toxin is now contained inside the plant, which has to be removed and managed. So while phytoremediation is not a new concept, it is still definitely emerging. And we often look at flowers for their aesthetic beauty, but the real beauty might be happening on the inside. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. 
You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.